we are being uh, recorded. I am also going to add for note-taking purposes and clarity an additional voice recorder here. And uh, we will begin. Can I have the agenda, please? I'm in a little bit of danger. My number's the same as Judy. So, we want to begin um, with an opportunity for our, uh, our guests, the visitors, to make any public comment. And if you do so, we ask that you, you limit your comments to, uh, to three minutes. If we have any substantial business related to your comments, we will schedule additional time to, to discuss or meet with you as necessary. Uh, but again, if you could limit your comments to three minutes. Yes. Please, your, your name and address. Friedman on G68 I had the opportunity a few days ago, less than a week ago, to talk to Chairperson Palamas about the salvation about the salvation center. And I'll let him if he chooses to address that issue, I'll let him continue with that. I thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you know, I cannot say I have any comments on the Salvation Center as I haven't yet visited there. Yes. Uh, my name is Marilyn Clare, and I live next door at 81 Connor Street, and I've recently become handicapped, and I bought myself a conversion van so that I could put my chair in the van and go, <laughs> which is great, but um, I've had a problem with parking, and uh, so <coughs> I asked for a reasonable accommodation according to the papers that I read online and stuff from the ADA that I was entitled to that, and, um, but I'm being denied that. And they're telling me that they can't give me a designated <coughs> spot for me. They did put one spot as a van. They put up a sign that said, this is for a van. But everybody else parks there. So I'd have to call the police on everybody if I wanted to park there and get them to move their cars and because it's not designated to me. So um, I'm, you know, and so they've let me know they're not going to do that. They might add another spot around the end. They tell me they can't because of the, you know, you have to have so many handicapped spots for the parking lot size. And so they're saying that because of that, they don't have enough handicapped spots to take one and give it to me. So they gave me all these reasons why they can't do it, but I think they're wrong. <laughs> so I'm here to try to figure out, am I wrong or are they wrong? Um, I would say let's discuss that after. We can look at the specific law would be the, the HUD section 504 requirements are, are binding on them as a public housing authority mm -hmm. and um, we will just examine the law on that. You are making a request for what's called a reasonable modification to policies and procedures. My first inclination is that they do have a significant obligation here, but we should discuss and schedule a time to talk about that in detail. Okay. And we will look up the law and make sure that we're on solid ground to advise you. Okay. So should, I mean, is that it for me? Should I go? <laughs> no, no, you can, you can stay. You're welcome to stay. Okay. Um, but we are, we'll be going through other parts of the agenda. But what we'll do is uh, schedule time to, to speak with you in, in, more, in more detail okay. and, and get the specifics and it gives us a chance to actually look up the law. Okay? So, this, so would I be in touch with uh, Marilyn then um, yes. for a time where we can all get, where we can get together, view the parking area, maybe take a few pictures and then, um, you know, and then you'll have time to review the law. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I would, yeah, if you could keep just very brief additional budget. One half minute on the Survival Center, not the Salvation oh. Center. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. Yeah. Okay. Right. Very good. Thank you for those comments. So um, let's do our introductions now. 
of the um, members of the commission and other um, other uh, uh, staff members and public employees who are present. And I'm Chris Palamas and uh, chair of the Disability Commission. Linda Desmond, ADA coordinator. Judy Kimberly, member and secretary. Um, City Councilor Marianne Labarge, VP. Leticia Warren, staff member. My name is Judy Page, I'm a member. Um, Deandre Dillon, I was assistant to Linda. And I'm Jennifer Carberry. I've recently been appointed, well, I'm the transportation coordinator here at the Northampton Senior Services, but I have just been recently appointed to the PBTA Advisory Board representing the disabled commuter population. <coughs> so I'm here to introduce myself. I have cards here if you would like that so you can get in touch with me um, directly if you have concerns that you would like me to bring um, you know, to the advisory board. I'm Ruth McGrath. I'm the Administrative Assistant to the Disability Commission. Clean Fine Director of Planning Sustainability. Hey, welcome all. So, um, I'm very pleased that we have a quorum present this evening, so we, we, can, tra can, tra we can transact businesses, uh, business of the Commission. Um, our first item is approval of the December 13th uh, minutes. Second. Second. Any uh, discussion? Any concerns with the minutes? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. The, the minutes are approved. Now, what I am concerned about, we've had a couple of major developments. Um, even since we developed the agenda for this meeting. And there are two which I am going to propose that we move to the, um, to the top of the agenda. Um, number one is that our uh, beloved ADA coordinator, director of senior services, has announced her retirement. I'll have her give you the date. And the reason, so this raises the very significant question that we have discussed at some length of moving forward with the consideration of how this position uh, may need to be structured or restructured in the future to be viable. Related to that, our second order of business, I would propose, is to discuss with, um, with Wayne the um, announcement that um, we have, um, in fact, potential approval of the $250,000 um, request from the Massachusetts Office on Disability. It was submitted by the Office of Planning and Sustainability, and it was developed in collaboration with this commission. So um, how should I frame that? I would like to move those to the top of our agenda, as they are matters of pressing Concern and give them uh, the, the time um, the time necessary. Okay, so which one do you want to go first? I would like to initially discuss the status of the ADA coordinator, as I think the the, the second issue is so intimately related. Okay, so you would say um, it'd be nice if we had it like one, two, three. I would say yeah. just what you said that you are requesting that we take out of the agenda and move up the two following that you just mentioned. Okay, I've, uh, the chair will entertain a motion that the agenda be revised to move, first of all, the question of the ADA coordinator uh, to the first position and the discussion of the MOD grant funding for improvements at City Hall and the annex to the second order of business with other agenda items to follow as time allows. So moved. Second it. Third it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to ask Linda to share your yeah. very significant news. 
Um, okay, March 30th is my last day as the, the ADA coordinator and also the director of the Northampton Senior Center. Okay. And um, a anyway, I just want to thank you all for the, the beautiful support that you all have given me through the, the almost two years by the time I actually resigned um, and retire. March 30th. So there's about almost three months, two and a half months of of finding the right person to take my place, and anyway, and I'm looking forward to it. I would like to speak. I want to thank you for the amount of time that you took as the director of senior services and went into a direction which I was pushing for for quite a while, both Pat Keller and I and several other people. And I thank you for doing that, and it has really opened up a lot of people who feel very comfortable coming here to the senior center. I see more people now being involved, which is great. And I think with all your staff and everything, everybody working together, pulling together is so valuable. And thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Uh, Linda, it has been heaven. Uh -huh. Yeah, it has. We, we admire the way you carried yourself in, in this position. Um, we understand and support your decision because we will be the beneficiaries of the additional, some of the additional free time that you have. We will say that as you decide and and, and reparse your your schedule, you know, we'll. There are many things we know that we're going to be doing together. Um, yeah. but, but your willingness also to take on this awesome responsibility of the ADA coordinator and to embrace it in the way that, that you have, um, we've made some good progress and that's been one of your gifts to the city. That is so true. I think you've really raised the bar, but you want to keep the bar high. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's been, I mean, it's been a learning experience for me and, you know, you all have been there. Every, there's been a lot of people on the left-hand side, you know, I mean, bringing us to, it, it's been a team effort. That's all I can say. Thank you so much. But I think a lot of people don't realize it, Linda. You're a director and then you're giving another position as an ADA coordinator. And when you do not have that experience, and thank God we have somebody who are very knowledgeable who helped and guided you. Because it's very hard to do both. Yes, we, we have several people here who are very knowledgeable. It's my pleasure to maybe talk more than, than some others in the process. But I think this is the point, as Marianne raises, that we, from the beginning of our process, as we began looking at it, we have said that probably our preeminent concern in moving forward is that the position of the ADA coordinator has to be made workable. I think we share a perception that we've discussed that it's simply as an add-on to the more than 100% of time responsibilities for running senior services um, is part of the reason um, that a lot of the agenda that we've tried to lay out and not been able to be pursued more aggressively is because uh, the position simply doesn't work. We've had preliminary discussions of, with the mayor about potential restructuring, uh, the potential of looking for another community to perhaps share and parse a position, so several share. Those considerations really now come to the fore and with your schedule, that means that that a discussion with the mayor is not one that can be deferred. I think we shall have a party for her. <laughs> oh, I, I, I agree. We, we will do that most definitely. But again, it's a few months before your departing. Mm -hmm. That would be, you said, the end of March. So it will be, we will be 
through most of this winter. Um, Jeez, are we going to have a parade? A parade, uh, parade. Yeah, that would work too. <laughs> I'm, not a real parade. Parade. I'm not a real good parade person. Oh, and either. guess what? There's a parade this weekend in Walmart, and I think all of us will march in there. There we go. So I would I would say that um, let's begin with the chair entertaining a proposal that we call on the mayor to meet as soon as possible with the subcommittee that met with him previously. Can I come this time? To discuss the position of the ADA coordinator. Again, this needs to be done by the subcommittee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have a question for you. Can I be part of the subcommittee? I think we have to have the subcommittee at this point. We'll talk about that at, at another time. I think at this point we have to have the group that met previously with the mayor following up um, on what we learned. Yeah. So with that, and understanding that the linkage between the two is critical, a little bit of history. The next issue that we are discussing, as you all know, we have gone through two stages of working um, with the Office of Planning and Sustainability to try to uh, revive, review, and strengthen the process of ADA planning in the city. It was based on uh, an assessment made by several of us, an opinion rendered by several of us who had extensive experience on the ADA, that previous planning efforts were not legally sufficient under the requirements of Title II of the ADA, and that the self-evaluation and transition plan of the city needed to be revised and upgraded. Our initial proposal was that we would work over time, very gradually, uh, on a volunteer basis to do that within the commission. We, some time ago, discovered that the Massachusetts Office on Disability had a small grant funding program, an announcement of a million dollars for the previous fiscal year, and a million dollars for this fiscal year. We applied for a small planning grant working with uh, working with Wayne and the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Excuse me, the Office of Planning and Sustainability was the applicant for the grant, um, which we did under a very limited and demanding time schedule back in June and over a couple of works, a couple of weeks move the planning process forward at a very basic level. We then continued that planning, which included, um, which included uh, Diana joining us as a work-study student to do more surveying of conditions in the pedestrian environment, but also looking at other issues like communications accessibility and a long list of others in addition. What we were anticipating and what came to fruition was that the Office on Disability announced a second round of grant funding. Again, we, we met with the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Um, Wayne took on the overwhelming, um, that is the bulk of the task of actually assembling a proposal which went uh, to them. The commission has seen the proposal, but what we agreed was the priority was the area between um, City Hall, both side <coughs> and rear of City Hall, connecting over to the annex where the pedestrian environment is extremely, extremely deteriorated. Now, our understanding is that the Mass Office on Disability, unless there was a change in the funding amount, had on the order of a total of a million dollars to use across the state. Um, we, um, as one is want to do with the, the good planning and some good documentation, argued that building on the tremendous effort of Pulaski Park, 
which is now a jewel in the center of town. The natural and organic extension of that was into the public walkways and the pedestrian environment behind City Hall. To our delight and amazement, perhaps, Wayne, you should formally make the announcement to the commission. Well, you said most of the good news. They, were, they told us on Friday we would see this grant of up to $250,000 to do the work exactly as you have one. So sort of around City Hall, so between City Hall and Memorial Complex and uh, municipal office building and sort of surrounding City Hall. Just a second. And we heard just on Friday. We heard it on Friday, right? Just a second. I'll talk around the applause and stuff. Just to be what, what, when we put together the application, I, I know money doesn't go as far as it used to. To do everything we'd like to do is more than the amount of money we have to build. So we're not going to do everything where you do the absolute worst sections. Oh, and understood that the, the costs are likely to, to exceed. The scope of what we laid out is likely to exceed. So there will even have to be priorities established within the priorities. Um, and what we did was go over the <coughs> deterioration um, in concrete that comes along the walkways. We were concerned about the lack of lighting as you go from the, the um, sidewalks at the front of City Hall and you move towards the annex where council meets. We were concerned about the uh, condition specifically of the stair handrails and we were concerned about the area in the walkway that connects from Pulaski Park over to the entrance to Council Chamber and the annex. There is an extreme side slope where we were picturing the danger of particularly children, mm -hmm. but potentially others coming off of that side slope. Yeah, the scope in total is going to exceed um, 250,000, so it has to be it has to be processed most definitely. Um, but we are also very concerned, and the point of discussion here is that we have um, potentially some disagreement about how the city's matching dollars and contribution on this should be met and that's what we have to urgently discuss what i think that from our discussion earlier today on the phone is that something we we properly need to discuss uh, with the mayor but why don't you provide any of your concerns and and explain to the commission what sure. we spoke so about earlier this point come up yeah, come on up Grant is a brick and mortar project, so it does everything that Chris outlined. There's a couple of things that need work as well. The uh, tactile warning um, for someone who's blind or vision impaired is substandard. The, the exit from what's legally the front door to City Hall, which is the door that faces Crafts Avenue, that doesn't meet the standards. The front of City Hall has some areas where the crosswalk is not good. Um, so we have money for the construction piece, and the prioritization is actually pretty easy because we look at the concrete where it's in horrible shape, we replace it where it's in not so great shape, we replace it with enough money. So it's pretty obvious for that. But the grant doesn't cover the design costs that we have. Um, and so I was under the initial uh, impression that you all were willing to put aside money from your um, uh, probation reserve account. Yeah, basically, there's the money you get from people who park illegally in a handicapped parking spot. Chris is uncomfortable with that, I think, because he's worried about the ADA transition piece. So we have a gap. The rule of thumb, it's just the rule of thumb, the design's about 10% of the construction. So we have a gap of about $25,000. And typically for small projects, design is a bigger percentage. But for replacing concrete, it's a smaller percentage because it's pretty easy to replace concrete. So that $25,000 design is probably a pretty good price. Um, I've reached out to an engineer and asked for a price quote, so I'll get a better sense when I get that, but my working number is going to be this $25,000. The challenge we have is really a timing issue. So um, the state, if you remember last year, we raced around spending like, design money in three weeks, whatever, four weeks, because a really short time period. Yeah. This sounds like more time, right? We have June 30th. 
but it's a really short construction system. So we have to design um, the project, advertise, and design takes you know, a month, six weeks. We have to advertise it, and that definition takes at least six weeks, just in terms of the advance notice we do. We have to open the bids and award the bid and get a contract to do work. So I'm very nervous about the time period. I I have I have a question. I you know you know SMS, right? I was wondering if you could do something like for SMS to you know that cross rocket from the campus side, do you think you work something up there? Like just uh, I know we not not with this not not talking about this way. But, but there is good news, which is that Smith College is very concerned about right. it. So Smith is working from on them. it separately. Because uh -huh. uh, I got hit by a car from at the campus. And so so that, that wouldn't be eligible for this grant, but Smith does have that in their priority. They have a project manager who's working on it and the committee process. So they're trying to find a solution for that. Yeah, we identified many, many more areas of deteriorated pedestrian environments, and we haven't formulated that all. That's going to take over time. What we had was a an agreement was this: if we were going to pick a highest priority from the survey that we did, uh, that this would be the highest priority. I think what our our disagreement is that. Um, the commission agreed to fund 5,000 of commitment on the initial, but we certainly had not anticipated that the city, in meeting what we understand to be the city's ongoing um, ADA obligation, that the commission would um, be asked to uh, commit what would be a substantial amount of the balance in the only account that we control. We might be able to do some amount, but what that amount um, it, is going to take some careful consideration. Um, I think that this is, excuse me, if we have, um, if we have any, any, any phones or phone calls. Yeah, can you shut them off? Yeah, if anybody needs to use their cell phone, please um, go outside the meeting to do so. <coughs> <coughs> so I think that's the difference, and I, I think we should meet as soon as possible with the mayor, understanding that we have a storm bearing down on us for tomorrow. And I have found, I don't understand why scheduling becomes so cumbersome in this small city. We'd be prepared to meet with the mayor very, very soon to discuss this. But I believe that there must be other accounts that the city could examine to see um, what it can put into this. Our understanding is that we've secured through good work and this collaboration that we want to preserve <coughs> and push forward, um, you know, a first step on, on the ongoing road. As I've said, the role of the ADA coordinator is going to be absolutely critical. Okay. And frankly, as a commission, we believe that we are taking a first step in a really expanding agenda <coughs> in which the city is going to be pressed to make funding decisions. That's we will disagree about those amounts inevitably as advocates will push for more and you will necessarily try to, um, you know, preserve within your, your, your own budgets. But um, would you be agreeable to our just scheduling the meeting as soon as possible with the mayor? Yeah, I, I think it's great for you to meet. I, I, you have to be careful. I, you know, I you earlier a different item talk about a subcommittee meeting. If you're doing a subcommittee, that would be a violation of open meeting law unless you advertise that and do it. So that's this the first, is a separate time. That's the first discussion with the mayor. We would then have to come back and have a anything that comes out of that discussion um, call a special meeting of the commission. We have provisions in our bylaws to hold a special meeting of the commission for any formal vote presenting the outcome of the discussions with you and the mayor um, in terms of what we we uh, what we propose and put it before the commission as a whole. Now, I know you have these constraints in the construction season, as you said, it races ahead and you have to move a bid process. Um, realistically, how much time do we have and can the mayor meet with us 
within the next couple of days? Yeah, I, I don't know his schedule, so I can't speak for that. You know, we're, we we missed this week's council meeting because of the conversation, so we don't have a choice, and we can't go back to council until the next council meeting. So and that will be two weeks hence. Yeah, be two weeks, right? Uh, as we have the calendar, the, the first thir thir Thursday in February. Yeah, I, I would think that two weeks hence to know we should be able to get an early meeting with the mayor, discuss it, hold a special meeting of the of the commission to present uh, whatever is the, the outcome of that discussion. We're obviously going to push the mayor to scrutinize accounts and bring the uh, lion's share from the city. So the alternative is for you all to vote to put aside a certain percentage of your fund towards it. Um, I, mean, I, I, I think my frustration, so it's clear, Chris, isn't about the dollar amount. It's, uh, my understanding was I was invited to apply <coughs> with the commitment that you were paying for design. And I think that's, that's, that's my frustration. If you all said you want to do 50% or 60%, whatever it is, and present it to the mayor, that's fine. But, I, you know, if it goes to the mayor and it's come back here, that's just a time period that it's with the and, and that is our disagreement. A meeting that we had discussing this second phase, at no point was it presented to the commission that we would pay for design. What was represented to this commission was we were committed to the planning, which included the donation uh, of substantial time that we haven't added up the hours, but we would put in by what we receive generally payment from the state for related work. We have already donated significant amounts and would continue to do so. But the planning, while the commission may make some contribution, uh, by no means at a level that's going to drain this account. But in any case, I, I don't need to go back. There's no, there's no point in going back. I guess the question is, can you have that discussion now about what that, that amount is? What's the significant contribution you want to make without draining the account? Can we make that? I would like to hear from some other commissioners. Are we prepared to have that uh, discussion now? The amount that you're requesting? I think the total, I mean, my, my estimate of the total sign is 10% construction, so that's $25,000. That's $25,000. $25,000? Yeah. We currently have in our account, I believe, $29,300. $29,352.20. And $25. So I, I'm not, you know, I, I think we can talk about, you know, a portion of what we have donating to it. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, have that discussion. I don't know that we can do the whole $25,000. I would, that say, wipes out I would say absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely so not. I, I have to agree with Chris. I agree with Chris that I think it'd be, I need, we need to save like half more, like other stuff too, so I, I agree with, with Chris. So, could I say a first, and I, I ask the other folks who were at the meeting, I do not recollect any commitment that we were going to play, pay for planning on this, that we would participate, yes. But your recollection and ours are, there's a divergence here. Right. Again, I, I, I don't care about going back, I care about solving this call for so. I don't. I don't care about going back in time, I just solve this call for yep. so. Um My inclination is to meet with the mayor first. I think what we have is a strong executive in this city. We've been talking with the mayor that you know we are moving on an expanding ADA agenda. I don't think it can be separated from, it cannot be separated from the question of an ADA coordinator. If we had to choose between the two, making the ADA coordinator's position viable for me as chair of the commission is the, is the absolute priority. Mm -hmm. I agree. We have yeah. had no commitment at this point from the mayor what the city is willing to ante up to make that happen. Until that happens, I can't say what remains from our account. Also, I have to agree with um, Wayne Biden on not guarantee if Wayne can meet with the mayor, his schedule is unbelievable. And the process that we have, Chris, even with counselors, when we 
falls this August. We asked the secretary or either Len what dates are available that he would be able to meet with a counselor or who would ever. It's very difficult to say, well, I would like it at a certain time. So I would, I would suggest that we call his office, make the appointment when you have your schedule, when you're available, correct? And yeah, if you would give us, yeah. I think that's what we should do. I think we should say as a commission, we are co requesting a meeting with the mayor and also Wayne Clyden will be involved with it. We would like a date and a time within the week or next week early when the mayor is available. Bingo, take it. Can I come to that one? This no. is this, what we're talking about, the people that we're right. Yeah, and that's the best way to go, Chris. Yeah. I, when can I, I agree. I, I think, I think, um, Wayne, do you have your schedule with you? I have my schedule, I have no idea what his schedule is. But um, if you could get us dates and times that would be available. Right, well, Annie, who's the mayor's appointment person, I think she can see my schedule online. So Good. she can look at both the mayor's schedule and mine and see it right there. So. Yeah, what we have to do is move the process quickly. Right, exactly. So Chris, would you be willing to call tomorrow? Yeah, sure. it in? It's the best way to get through the door. Yep. Why, why are you, do you agree that would be the best way to move the process? Yeah, I, I, I'm concerned about one thing you said, which is if you're waiting, if you're linking this to the ADA coordinator position, that's probably a much longer, more involved conversation. I don't expect a resolution by any means. Okay, but that's great. Yeah, just for sure. We, sure. Know that this is, we know that this is the issue. We know that we have a number of communities that are willing to, to talk, but we're saying very clearly, we're expecting the city to be anteing up at this point and accounts be examined to see what resources are available to do this. And then if we are, are agreed that what the balance is reasonable and will not leave this commission strapped and unable to do the seed activities that we feel are important, then we come back to the commission for a vote. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Can somebody formulate Thank that? I, I guess it, it will be the um, the motion. The chair will entertain a motion that the chair will contact the mayor's office to schedule a meeting as soon as possible to review the related issues, but with a primary decision being the potential for uh, planning funds to support um, moving the MOD grant construction process. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. And, 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 and again, whatever questions we have to resolve, Thank you so much for the work that, yeah. that you did on security. Game of money is the fun part. None of us thought you were going to get this much money out of those folks, yeah. right? Sure. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Someone would be part of the committee really bad. Chris? Excuse me. Phil um, so Sullivan's here, and I don't think he knew about the open public session to speak. Um, so, what we want to do is, uh, are, are you making a motion? I'm then? making a motion that we, if possible, could reopen the open public session because I do have um, Phil Sullivan here who would like to speak of some great concerns. I suggest you amend to say we reopen only to hear from Mr. Sullivan. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, the way we do public session is you address within within three minutes. If we have to have three minutes. If we have to have more substantial discussion, we'll schedule additional. Absolutely, time. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't do well in indoors, as you can tell. Uh, I'm mostly outdoors. 
Name and address. The reason, the reason I'm, I'm here, I called Mary Ann. Uh, I have a lot of time on my hands. I've been retired for 22 years, and I ride around this town a lot, and check properties and things that I do. And I'm up and down the street. I, I've been seeing an awful lot of the sidewalks not being cleared. Uh, I, I just like to set up a mechanism where maybe some of us could take pictures. I call the police. I, I don't get anywhere with them, but I don't get anywhere with dispatch. I sometimes sit there and wait for them. They say, we'll send somebody, but nobody ever shows up. The other day on King Street, big record from Red's towing out of West Springfield, not only on the bike path, but the sidewalk. Now, now we spend a lot of money in this town for sidewalks, number one. We don't need big, big tractor trailers and, and uh, multi-wheel uh, trucks. But also, there were some people coming out of, uh, out of uh, Yugo's that had to walk out on the street. Now, they weren't handicapped, thank God. But however, down on King Street, next to the Hotel North Hampton at the store 24, the Coca-Cola tractor trailer parks right up on the sidewalk, blocks it totally. Tractor trailer, cheap pile delivery. And I see this all the time at that location. Up at Birds, where I go every day to get my lottery ticket, my newspaper, sometimes twice a day. There's a handicapped uh, parking place out front. The pizza delivery man parks there. I've confronted them, I've actually boxed them in. Well, I, I put my flashers on, I see, oh, I get a ticket, I get a ticket, but I box them in by sitting in the street. And he says, I work for the, the, at pizza. I said, I don't care who you work for, you don't have a handicap placard. So I mean, it's just, it's not, 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 now the worst one is that I've run into, is I have a couple of friends of mine that can't get out and pump their gas very easily. And I believe that's a Massachusetts law, but it's on the side of every single uh, self-service gas station pump is a sign, silent horn for service. Well, I saw a poor lady up at the uh, old Hess, which is now Speedway, and I actually went over, I poked her gas for her, I put it inside. And he said, oh no, we don't have to come out. I said, well, yes, you do. So I called the police department. Not only did the dispatcher not know about this law, the sergeant on duty didn't know about the law, and I looked like a nitwit. And I'm pretty tired of looking like a nitwit with the police department. I'm going to address the chief when she comes to speak to Rotary, which I'm present. So that's really what I'm here about. I'd like to have somebody get back to me at some point. I don't want to come into meetings. If I could help, I will. Can uh, I say, uh, what you're saying is music to our ears. We agree with you on all of those three points. As I get it, one, snow removal is critical to have a safe pedestrian environment that people can move through. Two, trucks blocking or other blockages of that pedestrian environment has to be basically knocked back with new standards and procedures that are going to be enforced. And my understanding of the law it is in agreement with yours, that there is an obligation, and it's it's under federal law, the requirement that they, they pump. Self-service. And self-serve at the same price. At the same price, you're correct. At the same price. Yeah. I think you're right on all counts, and <coughs> I thank you very I would say we should put each of those on the agenda. Those would be a meeting with the Department of Public Works, probably around snow removal standards. Yes. And with the police department, both around the enforcement of not blocking and trucks blocking. And also, um, then we should in some way have a directive go out to all of the gas stations in town, licensed. informing them of the law and inviting them to a meeting if they wish to have it so the law can be explained to them and we can talk about the proper etiquette of how you do it. That's true. And it's not like in Northampton it's all piled up and nobody shovels it. In, uh, on that, 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 that regular street in Mongo Mary was before you get to City Hall, there's a big snow pile. That big pile by the, um, where the class block is? Yeah. Right. We I'd also have like to invite this committee to send a speaker to our Rotary Club. I'm the president this year until June. And uh, we meet at noon on Mondays. So if you could have maybe Mary Ann call me with somebody that wants to come to speak about the committee. Oh, we'd be delighted. And what you do, and maybe some brochures to enlighten some of our members, and uh, we do give a free lunch to the speaker. That's <laughs> terrific. That'd be great. Right, thank that'd you be great. So and actually, I wouldn't thank mind, you. you know, would, I wouldn't mind two speakers actually coming. Uh, that'd be no problem. There's plenty of parking. There's a handicap ramp there. 
in the back, and that's why one of the reasons we chose them for our new time meeting. That's that is terrific, and again, I really appreciate your raising that, and we're just going to ask you to work with us as we move forward on it. And Marianne has my number, so yep. whatever you need from me, you know, whether we need to start taking pictures, and time, dates. Uh, many times I've called the police, I've sat there, they don't even show up. Oh yeah, we're going to send somebody. You know, this is what we were just discussing. We went out and we took pictures oh, about right. basic pedestrian hazardous conditions and you're taking oh, it to the other level of operationally what happens when the snow falls what happens when uh, delivery or other work takes place um, one of the related issues there is the extent to which what's the proper distance for any restaurant using sidewalks mm -hmm. uh, to maintain the, the pedestrian pass well, when Mary and I were on the council together years ago we pushed that ordinance for the hundred percent clearing right. now, I don't know what ever happened to that but there was a city ordinance, we passed it. We sponsored it, co-sponsored it. Mary Ann is our historian and she, uh, she, um, she directs us to actions intended to be taken previously very often that have lapsed. It's announced in all the storm emergencies we get on the phone that you're responsible to shovel your yes. in front of your... If you notice, I'm glad you brought that up. So, on the radio, they do not, and I have asked, when um, that Huntley was the director, George and Jesus, to fully state that the sidewalk has to be cleared within the 24 hours. They're not saying that. They're just saying a reminder to clear the sidewalks. That's the problem. Right. So I think we need to let the director of the Department of Public Works, whoever is announcing, to the radio station, the full report of clearing the sidewalk within 24 hours. That's what our ordinance is all about. So, let me say what I think is, uh, I thank you for your comment and we'll proceed. I would think that let's consider um, for our next meeting and we have to decide whether we are going to take a month off that's to be decided on our agenda. I'll give you a spoiler alert. I think we have a lot of work to do if we're not snowed out. I would like to be, I would like to be meeting and working in the meantime. Uh, but I would say uh, if we were to invite both representatives of Department of Public Works and of the Police Department um, to our next meeting to and put these items on the agenda. I thank you everybody for I your time. Like I won't you. take up any more of your time. Okay. Thank, thank you very you much. much. Thank you. If you thank need you me, you need something for me, by all means. Right. The other thing too is that uh, I, I could commit Rotary Club to a, a few dollars if there were uh, if they were needed for this committee out there to do my best. So you wow. with something wow. that we could help with oh, we thank thank also. You. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. We we'll look forward to meeting with you all at the Monday meeting. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to um, talk about our meetings. I have to say, before, which we did, we would have either a January or February off, but I think some critical issues are coming aboard. I would say that if they're predicting the weather being bad, then we make that decision to cancel it and maybe look at in two weeks of rescheduling it. Don't wait another month. I know. Because we can do that. That makes sense to me, Marianne. Exactly. Yeah, if we, I agree. When we set a meeting date um, through the winter, we can also set a snow date. Exactly. Yeah. We've done that when I've had public hearings in Lloyd's, et cetera, and the old school goes, oh, wait, I can tell you, we had to cancel off twice, but we had snow dates. I like that and idea. is your feeling the best snow date is a week later? Sometimes, you know, those storms get to timing in. I've always found useful is three days out. If we have a snow, substantial snowfall, usually conditions are more passable about three days out. What would your preference be? A week offset or a three day offset? That's good. Winter stands. I 
Can I have a suggestion? I think. Uh, that's right. Yes, um, I, I have a suggestion. I thought oh, excuse me, excuse Leticia me. speaking. Oh, I couldn't hear her. I had a suggestion, maybe like, maybe like we do like two, three, three weeks on and <coughs> or like <coughs> say like if there's no like, like if like if they're Tuesday and we then we do schedule like the 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 week before like the snow or something like that? What What do you guys think? Well, see, the problem is we won't know when the snow is coming, so we right. have to schedule That's true. after. That's right. Gene, what's your feeling? My, my, my suggestion is we schedule for the following week. For the following week? Yes. Yeah. Right. Very good. I'm looking at, which is common sense, because that's what Wayne and oh, I or, did. Or any time within a week, I would say. Right. I mean, we one day, we did it the next day. Watch, we week. have to. But Wednesday's are hard for me, though. Yeah, it depends. Okay, the I, I like the, the idea. The additional of piece that I would, yes. Was the date of our regular meeting, if it should snow, we have the snow date and do it the following week. That is what Wayne and I've done with exactly. other public hearings. It's, it gives pe people the adequate time, especially yeah. with working, with changing their schedules. Yeah, not, not everybody <laughs> is as comfortably semi-retarded as you know. No. And we'll have Linda come back and do training on what we do with semi-retirement. But yeah, okay. I like the week after because Wednesday's not hard for me, though. Good idea. So Mary Ann, um, well, the chair will entertain a motion that through the winter months we will schedule oh our regular scheduled meeting and also hold a, a okay. snow day, which will be exactly one week later. So I'm going to call you in the next two weeks. All in favor? Okay. I, oh, I can go. I was just going to go to the bathroom. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, Mary Ann. I, we don't have a lot of time left, but I do think we need to give it an update on the uh, planning board here. That's oh, yes. Good, that's an important Chris, point. you can do that in a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. So as you all know, we had a request and meetings with the Disability Commission uh, by the family, brought to us by Marianne, residents of her ward who were concerned that elder members of the family having moved into an auxiliary apartment, which was at a great distance, approximately 100 feet from the existing driveway, needed a secondary, needed a secondary driveway close to their auxiliary apartment. That required a variance under the, uh, under the parking bylaw. What's going on? I turned on? it off. I'm sorry. I turned it we off. We have. Yeah, please keep all phones off at the meetings. We went to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission delayed with a previous hearing by more than an hour. We sat through a very long process. We then had a one hour discussion. The uh, recommendation of the planning office was not to agree to the variance. We explained the basic principle of reasonable modification of policy and procedure. Uh, Marianne was present, Linda was present, the family members were present. It took an hour of discussion to resolve not only that it made good sense to keep this family intact, but also that no fee uh, requirement should be imposed which would have been costly to the family after an hour we had a six to one vote in favor uh, a very happy family went out into the bitter freezing cold that night across the treacherous and iced over <laughs> terrain right. outside of council chamber and we talked about the safety <coughs> safety is a big <coughs> of Ryan Road or Pertzwick Road or anything, when you bring it up to planning about safety, they look at that. Uh -huh. And you were looking at good elderly people. <laughs> oh, it was a bitter, 
<laughs> it was a bit of a cold night, and it worked out well. It did work out. And what I was yes. impressed with, let's emphasize this, time and again, we are explaining this idea of a reasonable modification to policies and procedures. We are not asking them to jettison existing policy and to throw it out cold cloth. We are asking them to respond to a particular set of facts, and if there is not a compelling reason legally to say no, that would be either an undue financial or administrative burden, or a fundamental alteration, a fundamental change in the nature of the program, then the legal obligation is to comply. We had a six to one vote. That's great. Yes. We won that one. So we're I'm feeling sure we like we're on a bit of a streak. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you were in the um, I don't think we should. <laughs> we should say that's in the that's in the public in the um, public record. Yeah. Can I tell you why Wednesdays don't work for me? Because so that we're not going to meet on Wednesdays. That's a good thing because it's going to be on Tuesday. Yeah. Why is it so snow day? Oh, yeah, the week after. Yeah. It's going to be a week Tuesday. after. So to schedule in the commission and schedule in one week later in case of snow. I don't want any more snow. No, I mean, none of us do. So I suggest that we hold the other items on this agenda. Time sensitive, yes, to our. Yeah, we have a, to our administrative assistant. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, it's just that um, people are due for renewal of their code of ethics. If you look in the, well, it's in the time of last month's of the agenda, and I'll put it in the minutes. There's a link you have to go to. If you've been reappointed, you just have to go out to this website and get the test. It takes about 10 minutes if you can't fail. If you answer a question wrong, you ask you the right question. And if necessary, if you don't have a computer, we can set you up in the lab here. I can come in and meet with people if they need help getting connected, and I'm sure when they ask people that can help with that too. When should I do mine? What's our new line? What's our time frame? We're going to let this done. Everybody's different. It depends when you were re-elected. I believe you're done. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know that I've ever done it. <laughs> I went to the Chris website and got, got I have the list from, I got. I have the list from Cam, and she said she gave it to you last year. She just gave me the update one on it. Now I got to get on to AOL and find yeah. it. Now I should deal with you. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm sure willing, but you know, you got to. I did mine right after our swearing in. Yeah. And it does, it takes more than 10 minutes. Well, yeah, but it's. Okay. Well, well, I'm really bad and I don't tell anybody to do this, but I have to do it as a paid city employee now. Mm -hmm. like besides the receptive for commission, I skip all the text and just go right to the test. Shame on you. I know. Don't tell anybody I did that. <laughs> uh, you can answer, you can that answer the question. You can say that a, your basic understanding and command of the principles and standards of the public <laughs> process changed since the last time I was up here. <laughs> is sufficient. <laughs> if it smells like thievery <laughs> and conflict of interest, I'll all you have to do is look at your nightly news. That's great. So, will we all take the pledge that within a within the next ten days we will visit the website and take the test? If we need to. Wait, do you have mine? I do. I know. No, do you have mine? I don't take the test. Thank you. So I said, when do I, when did I have to do you have to, I'm pretty sure you have it with you? Uh, no, I don't have, I have the link with me, but I don't have the um, list, of, the list of who has to take it and who doesn't. If, if Leticia does, do you think we could set a time where you could help her yeah. um, do it in a senior center? Sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Most definitely. Right. Leticia will well. take it. find time and the uh, schedule that okay. works for you. Okay. So I don't know when I have to take mine again, that's why I... I'll let you know. We I have to get you right email because you're not getting my email. I'm so going to send the list to, to Judith also, the one that Pam just sent me. Okay. Because there's, I think, actually, one, one that needs to take it. Um, it's got all the dates when everybody started, when they got reappointed, the other one that she just gave me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Do we have any other petitions that is pressing the transaction? Um, the, the chair entertains a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.